In a previous video, we had talked about functions and we briefly discussed the idea of domain and range. But since this is an important concept that you will be asked to analyze and use throughout your Algebra 2 and pre-calculus experience, um, it's really important to dive into it deeper. So the purpose of this video is we want to be able to look at a function, either as a, in a rule or equation form, a table or a graph, and be able to describe the domain and the range of that function. So let's review the definition we came up for a function. So for a domain or range of a function, so the domain is the set of po the set of possible values. So let's uh there we go. Sorry about that. Is the set of possible values for the input of a function. So an input is usually x. And so we want to be able to describe every value of x that can be put in to the function without something funky happening. The range is a set of possible values for the output. So another way to say it is this is the y values. And this range contains all the y values that the x values in the domain can generate. Okay. So let's look at an example. So let's look at, um, well, y equals, let's do um, the square root of 2x minus 3. All right, so now to look at the domain, what I want to ask myself is, what values of x can I use in this function without something weird happening? Now, one thing I know about square roots is that the value I take the square root of can't be negative. It can be zero or greater. So one way to figure this out is I just look at this equation. I say, well, what makes this equal zero? So sometimes to find the domain I want to solve. So I know this inside has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I get to solve a simple inequality. So I'm going to solve this. I subtract 3 from both sides and I divide by 2. So 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves or 1.5. So what this tells me is as long as x is of greater than or equal to 3 halves, this can happen. So I would say the domain is all real numbers greater than or equal to three halves. So we like so instead of using words, we like to use shorthand notations. We have all the sets. So this is a correct way of describing this. Okay. So the range. So we look at the range. We want to ask ourselves what based on this information what is the possible outputs i can have in this function okay um give me a second here i close something that i want to use later so i gotta find it sorry guys okay so now the range is going to be what values of y can I get out? So because this is the smallest value I can have, let's plug in this value in for x and see what I get. So y is going to equal the square root of 2 times 3 halves minus 3. And so 2 times 3 halves, well these cancel, that's 3, so 3 minus 3 is 0. And that makes sense because this value gave me exactly zero. Now this would be different if I had a number being added to the outside or subtracted. But since it is, right, and I know I can't get anything, the smallest number I can take the square root of in this case is zero, and I can only get positive values, y has to be greater than or equal to zero. So now let's take a look at what this looks like on a graph and see how the graph is telling me the same thing. So let's look here. So we're going to take the square root of 2x minus 3. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the table. So I'm going to hit enter. Anytime I, I enter equation into it, the calculator, hit enter. Let's look at the table. Now let's find 
Um, so t three halves is between one and two. So somewhere in between there is my 1.5, right? Notice how anything less than that, right? One, zero, all have an error in the calculator. So that's telling me that when I plug these numbers into my rule, something funky happens. In this case, I take negative square root. So my calculator is telling me anything one or less is, you know, not going to work. But because I have, so if I go to my table set and I change my difference, I can go by 0.5. So I'm going to show you 0 0.5. I hit enter. Then I go back to my table. I can see how if I go down to 1.5, that's where I get zero. So my calculator is telling me on the table that, hey, anything less than 1.5 doesn't work. Now the graph looks like this. Notice how the graph only exists from this point to the right. And it looks like that's between 1 and 2. So I hit the trace button. I can scroll over. And you can see how an x is about 1.5 is nothing, but then when I scroll over, I get that point. So you can kind of estimate on the graph. Later on, we'll look at, hey, how do I get that exact point? So there's what the graphing calculator is telling me about that. So we're going to do one more example here, just so we can see this. Um, let's, so next one. So let's look at this function. So let's do function notation. So let's look at the function. Um, let's go negative 2x squared plus 5x. Okay, so let's talk about the domain. So usually when I have domain, I use a capital D with a colon. Now, what values of x can I put into this equation? Well, I can plug x into here and square anything, rational, whatnot. And I can also plug in x here with anything. There's no funky things going to happen. No taking squares to negative numbers. No dividing by zero. So this domain would be all real numbers. And all that means is that any number on the number line can be plugged into here. Now, what? One way we're going to get really good at showing this is with inequality notation is I show that same set of numbers by writing this negative infinity less than x less than infinity. Remember, infinity just describes that the graph goes on forever in both the negative infinity direction for x, so all the way to the left, and the positive infinity direction for x, all the way to the right. So all real numbers are encompassed between these two values and let's be clear infinity is a concept it's not a number so as I go further on right and left I can pick a number that still works in here so this right here is something that you want to be able to write you can for now you can write all real numbers but this this is kind of the way we go now the range is a little bit trickier so um, we don't have some tools yet to figure out what the range is so we're going to look at the calculator so we're going to type this in the calculator. We get negative 2x squared plus 5x. Okay. I'm going to graph this. And so you can see the graph opens down. And this point right there is what I want to know. So the calculator actually helps me find this. So to find this maximum point, I hit second trace. I'm going to find the maximum. I'm going to pick two values of x that maximum is between. So I know it's, I think it's between zero. I'm going to hit zero. Enter. And it looks like it's three to the right of it. Then I guess I just kind of trace up until I get there. I hit enter. It calculates and it tells me when y is 3.125, that's where the maximum value is. So if that value there is 3.125 and the graph opens down, the outputs possible are every value of y equal to and less than this number. So I'm going to come over here 
am I right? The range is y is less than or equal to 3.125. So we want to be able to find domain and ranges of all sorts of functions. So throughout your courses you take, Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, this concept will be coming up. And don't worry about it if you don't get it right now. It's going to come through practice. So every time you are asked to find domain and range, you really want to attack it and start to understand it. Because it's important to be able to describe a function fully when we start analyzing all sorts of fun, interesting things.